Now, generically speaking, here's how acids work. I've got a proton source, or a source of hydrogen, stuck to something. I'll call the something A. I throw that something A into a bucket, and it gradually dissociates to form H plus and A minus. A minus is the conjugate base of this thing. Now, of course you should understand that this is sort of a lazy way of writing this. In a real equilibrium setting, if I've got water lying around, this HA donates a proton to this uh, H2O to form H3O plus hydronium and, releasing and, and releases A minus, its conjugate base. If this is a strong acid, of course, it's completely one way, so I have a one way arrow there, whereas if it's a weak acid, I've got an equilibrium dance going on. As I've already taught you, going across a row from left to right on a periodic table, elements get more electronegative, so I'll write down more electronegative, which means as you get more electronegative, you're an element that is more able to suck electrons towards yourself, and therefore more able to handle a negative charge. So as you go from left to right across a row, A gets more and more acidic because A minus gets more and more stable. So fluorine, for example, is more able to handle a negative charge than oxygen because fluorine is more electronegative. It can suck electrons towards itself more than oxygen. Therefore, F minus is more stable than O minus. And as a result, HF is a stronger acid than H2O. So once again, I hope that makes sense. The stability of this thing directly determines how easy it is to lose a hydrogen. If this is very, very stable, it's easy for this to shed a hydrogen and become A minus. Now, what happens is we go down a column. Well, I've got fluorine, followed by chlorine, followed by bromine, followed by iodine. As I go down a column, electronegativity actually decreases. Iodine is less electronegative than bromine, which is less electronegative than chlorine, which is less electronegative than fluorine. And yet, acidity increases as I go down. Why does acidity increase as we go down? Well, what else increases as you go down? It's size. Size increases as you go down also. So HI is a stronger acid than HBr, which is a stronger acid than HCl, which is a stronger acid than HF. HF is a weak acid. So electronegativity is not the reason here. Size must be. So what that tells me then is that I minus must be more stable. So I'll go ahead and write down increasing stability. Once again, I minus must be more stable than Br minus, which must be more stable than Cl minus, which must be more stable than F minus. So if I've got an I minus here, that's really stable, which means HI is going to be wicked acidic and just go, wha-bam, and form I minus. Br minus is not as stable as I minus, but it's still really stable, stable enough that H, uh, HBr also gives up a hydrogen to go, wha-bam, and form Br minus. Cl minus, not quite as stable. Still stable enough that HCl is a very strong acid. It's a one-way arrow. It goes, whoa-bam, F minus. F minus is not as stable as any of these things down here. The arrow for F minus is a two-way arrow. So it doesn't go, whoa-bam. It just goes kind of like, eh, forms F minus. So F minus is less stable. Why in the world is an I minus so stable compared to a B minus, or a BR minus, which is more stable than a Cl minus, which is more stable than an F minus? It is, once again, all based on size. If I take an electron and put it on I minus, I minus is huge. I'm spreading that electron all around the outer surface of the outermost orbitals of iodine. Iodine hardly feels it. It's like spreading an electron across a beach ball. So much surface area, that electron can spread across it. The iodine can hardly even feel it. So iodide, I minus, very stable. Br minus, in contrast, a little bit smaller. It's like spreading an electron across maybe a basketball. What about a chlorine? Well, chloride is smaller still, so that would be like spreading it across maybe a baseball. Still stable enough it can handle it, but definitely feels it a lot more than a Br minus, which feels it a lot more than an I minus. Whereas an F minus, an F minus is very, very small. When compared with our baseball, for example, throwing an electron on a fluorine might be like smearing it across a sphere shaped like this, or sized like this, I should say. So it's all based on size. 
That tells us then that as you go down a column on the periodic table, acidity increases, not because of electronegativity, but because of increasing size. Let's take a look then at these analogs. I've got hydrogen stuck to oxygen, hydrogen stuck to sulfur, hydrogen stuck to selenium, which is right underneath sulfur on the periodic table, and hydrogen stuck to tellurium. Which of these would be the most acidic? Well, yeah, it's tellurium. Hydrogen stuck to tellurium, much more acidic than hydrogen stuck to selenium, much more acidic than to sulfur, which is much more acidic than oxygen. Why? Not electronegativity. Oxygen is the most electronegative of all of the series. It's all based on size. And Te minus is much stabler. So if I have, for example, H, H2Te, this is way, way stabler than H2O. Got it?